All right. So it's the best time of year for NBA if you love 12 guys competing for a roster spot and pretty much playing ISO ball and never doing anything properly. Uh, I'm talking about Summer League. In case you, in case you missed that reference, uh, I've been watching some summer league highlights, trying to check out the top, uh, sorry, top draft picks, and unfortunately, my my screen is just littered with a bunch of guys that are trying to make that fifteenth man roster by um, playing really good basketball, by over dribbling, not looking for the for the pass, uh, shooting the second they catch it, and I'm I'm watching this and I'm thinking this cannot be what the the league thinks is going forward. So why don't we change summer league? Why don't we try Summer League with a four-point line? Why don't we try Summer League with dunks being worth three points? Why don't we try some random rules? Because let's be honest, no one's taking Summer League seriously with the regulation rules. So you might as well make it a bit more interesting to watch. And you know what? Let's do some crazy stuff. Why don't you get a point every time you get an assist? So you, if you shoot a three-pointer and you get an assist, it's four points instead of ISO ball. We got to do something because Summer League is awful to watch. I get it. There's guys out there that are getting their big break and have a chance to impress somebody. but I don't know if anybody in their right mind thinks, oh, if I pretend to be Kyrie Irving every or James Harden every single possession when no one knows my name, that's clearly going to get me a roster spot. I don't know. What do you think about revamping Summer League with some wild rules? I, I hate to be the voice of reason when we're when we're sort of getting getting into our recordings here, but um I feel like you're the you're one of the most you know, one of the most serious guys on the Summer League uh, take right now. Um I think it is what it is. Um, in fact, it's funny. I had this thought like yesterday, maybe that um, I was looking at the uh, Las Vegas results. Obviously, Wembenyama's in Las Vegas at the moment. He's played two games now. Had a bit of a stinker first game. Bounced back a bit in the second game, but lost his second game, obviously. Um, and I was like, hold on, there was a bunch of summer league games um, earlier in Charlotte, I believe, right? Um, and I was like, but who won? Like, did someone win? And I guess I was thinking, I was thinking like that. That it was like, like no one. No one cares. <laughs> I think that's probably the point. And and I guess to a greater extent here, Summer League is firstly a, a bunch of prospects, like you said, fighting for a roster spot, young talents, undrafted players, players maybe in their second or third year in some prospects, uh, you know, situations that aren't um, sort of rotational players yet and trying to really earn that uh, opportunity. And I would imagine many of them have never played together before. Okay, and I'd imagine many of them are sort of in a mismatch position. You're being sent out there playing at a spot where you're not usually used to play with. Sure, there's probably some level of, you know, all right, we're going to try and run this set, try and run that set. But uh, you would hardly have the um, time to sort of put together the chemistry you would expect from a, uh, you know, a team that obviously gets to play a, a whole season together in a sense. So ultimately, it's a big scrimmage. That's really what it is, isn't it? Summer League's a big scrimmage. You go out there, you do what you do, you try to impress. And um, I don't know, like, you know, clearly the van scouts and stuff like that, you know, elite scouts can see those players that sort of make the right plays. So it's not necessarily always the box score in that sort of sense. And, and now you can capture box score impact or game impact, obviously in different ways besides the scoring. But I guess it's, um, you know, it's just looking for the players that, you know, catch the eye and make the right plays. And, I don't know. I guess players are really fall in love with uh, being able to, you know, overwork the ball. Isn't that that the case? I guess that that's a way to capture people's attention. There's been some nice highlights. You know, obviously the um, the LU poster on Webin Yama, you know, that's going to get Kai Jones some attention. And I've learned his name just for that highlight. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, th there's a chance to try some things, you know, like stealing from the big three and putting in those four point circles. Like, just do something random because, yeah, you're right. The result does not matter. Getting extra points for doing random stuff is not going to hurt the league. And we kind of already we kind of already understand, like, everyone that wasn't drafted in the top 10 that's playing in that summer league spot probably won't be in the league by midway during the season. Like, that is just how summer league goes. It's, it's a great opportunity to get a little bit more NBA buzz. But other than that, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like you've just insulted every undrafted NBA player that has earned themselves a rotational spot. Um, I, I guess, you know, you're basically saying if you were top 10 uh, pick, then your summer league, you know, you, you're just going to, you know, summer league's your high, high point in your career to a certain extent. But I guess it, it does offer that opportunity to, to uh, opportunity to unearth, I guess, those, um, you know, maybe what are you going to call them? Diamonds in the rough, maybe that can go on to have productive careers. 
um, even though they were undrafted players. And I guess, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of some names that bounce to mind play half the Miami Heat roster, right? <laughs> yeah, that were undrafted and came through Summer League and then signed a probably two-way contract or got into a G League team at that point and then went from that into, you know, signing an NBA contract. This is two guys with spare time. I'm Fowles, this is Nick. You're probably a basketball fan like us, so hopefully you can throw us an assist in giving our video a like and uh, subscribing to our channel. And if you've got thoughts, feelings, or even some suggestions, please put them down in the comments section below. And thank you for using your spare time to watch us in our spare time.